Hey, I'm here finally today with the uh, review. I'm reviewing my painting, Is Over the Rainbow. I got it here. This is not super visible, but don't worry. We have the power of post-production technology. Um, remember to do the things. Sub and scribe. So I want to start off this one by reading the description. I got it, a printout here. So here, here's the description. It's like it'd be an overview, and then we'll get into the details. This was the first painting I completed upon moving to Redacted. The bed sheet was gifted to me by my friend Chris, who is a phenomenal artist herself. The subject was inspired by a morning I spent in Central Park. I was walking around the Arts and Crafts Fair feeling lonely and small. I wanted to meet the artists there and strike up conversation with them, but I was much too anxious to do so. I was doubting myself, telling myself I don't belong here, that this place is not for me. I was sitting and drawing, but nothing was coming out of my pen. Sometime after that day, I visited the redacted art gallery and was heavily inspired by the paintings that were on display. Giant, colorful, intricate, and captivating. I thought about the bed sheet. I thought about finally starting a new painting. This is the result. The main figure sits beneath a tree alone. He has scars on his face and plants growing out of his head. This symbolizes the pain and trauma I have endured in my life. And the primary way in which I have coped with it, creating beauty through artwork. There is no celebration or fanfare for this healthy coping mechanism. There is no reason to be alerted by it. There is no screaming, no inflicting pain, just quiet work. The figure clutches onto his legs and stares through space and time into a void, a deep void that takes over roughly a fourth of the canvas. Within the void are reminders of love and beauty, flowers symbolizing the love I have for my partner, and the words, is over the rainbow. This particular cover of the song, Over the Rainbow, has significant meaning for me. Israel Kamakavivole was an artist that triumphed in his craft despite any and all difficulties that were laid upon him. His final live performance at the 90, 1996 Nahoko Hanahono Awards moved me unlike any live musical performance I've heard. Closely rivaled by Elvis's performance of Unchained Melody in Ann Arbor, Michigan, when he was in the last few months of his life. The theme of artists who struggle tremendously with their personal demons, yet still create beauty and put their entire soul into their work, is deeply personal to me. To me, it is the closest thing to a miracle that a person can do. In the face of darkness and despair, to reach in and pull out something beautiful and otherworldly. Now that is magic. There is nothing more impressive to me than that. That's why I put so much feeling and thought into my paintings. So yeah, um, that was the overview. I wrote that description for it, uh, for, for the art show I mentioned in the last video. And But now today I want to give you guys what I promised a analysis video proper. So let's get into it. Okay, so starting off... We have the, the actual material itself, a bed sheet. I painted on bed sheets before, Kenneth Y. bed sheets. Well, frankly, I, uh, I, I just have a uh, fascination and interest in painting on non-conventional things and, um, and just working with non-conventional things and um, that kind of thing. There's no deep meaning like, oh, the sleep. It's connected to sleep and it's this and that. It's just like, you know, my friend gave me the, the bed sheet to paint on specifically. So it's a sign of like... Uh, of my friend supporting me and giving me uh, a means of working, you know. So then I painted the figure, and as I mentioned in the thing, you can see, you know, scars on on their face and plants growing out, and you can see there's three eyes. There's three eyes, right? There's a there's two blue ones, which if you look closely, right, and then you have one black one. Now that could be either a eye hole or a, a an additional eye, you know, like a like a darkness, seeing into the darkness, not looking in the light, kind of thing, um, or the eye that misinterprets, or um, the eye leaving the head, shooting out of the skull and moving away this way. You could see it in all those different ways. But I think primarily what it makes most sense to me is the way I draw eyes is sometimes I'll have one floating off the side like that. Um, so it makes more sense that this is a third eye. You know, this is an additional eye that is, you know, seeing things that aren't quite there, you know, interpreting things the way they aren't, you know, and that could be the cycle of depression, the voice of depression and anxiety mixed together 
making me doubt myself, make, you know, that can make one person doubt themselves and kind of match the blue and the black matches the void, right? Like what's being seen, what's being focused on. And it's this deep feeling of, of, of darkness, but also of just sadness and also, but like interspersed or is all, all these flowers, which again, I mentioned is uh, representative of a romantic, a deep romantic love for another person, right? And um, then there's the reminder, the one glaring reminder of why I do what I do. And it's, you know, to, to get my soul, to get my spirit out, to get myself out, to get things that I need to pull out, out. I know things I need to confront, you know, out. Um, and to share with the world or share with whomever will listen and that it will be cathartic for them or that they'll feel seen and heard um, through, through what I do and what I make. Um, and yeah, so there's that going on. There's the eyes and you know, the scars again, that's trauma and the plants are my ideas and thoughts, but also like the ideas and thoughts are there. They're kind of just growing or just kind of breathing and they're not necessarily being harvested or cultivated quite yet at this time. Uh, it's just kind of happening. And you can see that there's some overlap here, like this tree is kind of this tree in the background kind of overlaps this tree, and then this tree just kind of has this strange lighting, especially when it's like kind of just right next to the next to the um, the void here. Um, yeah, and then you have like the sunset color sky, and it's all sort of and like you still have the blue in there, and then the sun. It's all sort of, it's supposed to be a bit surreal. It's supposed to be kind of wonky supposed to be kind of like you're not quite seeing what's around you you're you're pulling and interpreting it in a different way that you're you know kind of you know mystifying the environment around you you're overcomplicating it you know okay and then so there's that going on and then the figure is sitting down under this tree and there's just one flower growing between their legs and if we get a zoom in on that flower, we can see that it is a very chaotic cluster of uh, of colors, and ex you know it's exciting and it's hot, it's dynamic, it is interesting, it's right there. So you know you could say, oh, maybe he's looking at it, or is he just too focused on the void to even register this really beautiful thing right in front of him, you know, and. Also, there's just like the lines that kind of feel like scat, like kind of like scaffolding or a skeletal kind of, um, kind of structure to the body and to the clothes, and like just kind of feeling like you know more mechanical or more stiff than anything. So um, I think that's kind of what's going on with that. Um, and you could see some distant figures and like you know like trying to avoid contact with these figures in the back you know again loneliness self-doubt isolating um not wanting to uh engage with others necessarily um and the shoes he's got shoes sometimes things are just things and they're just shoes um the ground is the same color as the or the same texture as the uh as the void and the trees and you know, like this ground. This ground is uh, oil. This is water based. This is like water. And, um, and yeah, uh, I would overall say that's pretty much what's going on with this painting uh, from my perspective. And of course, I'm very interested to hear your own take on it, what you think about it. Um, uh, I have the image linked down below, either via Instagram or via um, some kind of uh, means of just looking at it full render without having to download it. I have to look into that. Um, but yeah, that's the, uh, that's the painting that I did that I was working on. And those are some of the thoughts and things uh, I was wrestling with. Um, if it interests you to see any more analysis videos about other paintings I have that are on my Instagram, uh, please let me know. And hopefully I'll get a website going back up soon because my old portfolio was shut down because of my expired Adobe license. So... I'll have to, I'll have to uh, figure out a different means of um, uploading my my work into my own personal website. Um, do all the things: sub, inscribe, like, comment, whatever you know. Just do those things, whatever. Um, if you feel like it. 
thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for everything. Uh, Y'all the best. Uh, we'll talk more art soon. Peace out.